Hello everyone. I welcome you all for the course, short term course, CDU approach in product design and project management. Today we are going to discuss about conceive the topic. This is lecture number one. So, what do you mean by conceive? Uh, if you look at the dictionary for the meaning of the word conceive, it stands for devising an idea in your mind. So, in the context of our product design, we can put in this way. Conceive means creating an idea for developing a product. So you may get a question at this point. Can we generate the ideas naturally? I would say maybe sometime. Maybe whenever you are in some kind of discomfort circumstances or whenever you do a job which is, uh, which is naturally hard to do. So in such kind of circumstances, you, you may require some aid, you may require some help, you may require some kind of means uh, which will make your job more easier than what you, how you can do, how you are, do, uh, you are doing in that situation. So uh, in such cases, maybe sometime, rarely, occasionally, we may get some idea or some idea may strike our mind coincidentally. That's the right word, coincident. So, uh, if you look at the, the ages of the science, uh, there were a lot of incidents that happened coincidentally. But uh, uh, can we generate ideas habitually? You may have this question. You can do that. But when you can do that? If you practice some methods to generate your ideas or to enrich your uh, process of thinking, then you can do uh, the, the idea generation process or idea generation habitually. So what are those uh, things that you have to do uh, if you want to uh, create a lot of ideas or you want to uh, get a lot of ideas for solving a particular issue or problem. So I would say the first thing is that you have to refer, refer the detail of every product or like uh, if you look at the internet databases nowadays we have a lot of database uh, you have a patent database and you have a product database and you have uh, magazines so many things are there so what you supposed to do you have to you have to look at uh, every product it may be a small product but you have to see what the, what are the features in that what are the special features in that and how do they function you may you may get the detail from any magazine even daily magazine or weekly magazine or monthly magazine whatever you have in the library of the college but you have to go and refer a lot of detail about everything whenever you come across a small product even you have to see how they are connected how they function and then not only that apart from that whenever you get the data and you have to start analyze the data you have to think whether something better can be done with that that's what we call critical thinking so that won't come spontaneously that will come whenever you practice it so you have to think what betterment can be done uh, can we do the same job that is uh, uh, can, can we create something uh, to do the same job that is being done by the same machine in a better way or easier way or a cheaper way so you have to raise a lot of questions that will lead to the the art of critical thinking that now i have given you a link over here uh, a youtube link that i have recently come across a lecture a tedx lecture uh, that was really interesting uh, about the critical thinking i i encourage you all uh, to visit this youtube uh, video it will be interesting and then i would say the next one is for all the mechanical engineering students you can learn modeling softwares there are a lot of modeling softwares in the field today and uh, you, you, I, uh, I would recommend SOLIDWORKS that is one of the very easiest and uh, fastest uh, 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 way of uh, learning software. You can easily learn it, quickly learn it and uh, it will create some uh, interest whenever you learn some modeling software and get that software installed in your computer. You may try to do something, you may try to develop a small idea in a pictorial way, in a graphical way. Whenever you try to do that, it will induce some kind of interest inside you. So that will lead to the further invention. It will push you, it will motivate you. So I would strongly recommend all the mechanical engineering students to learn one, at least one modeling software very um, uh, 
uh, highly and then you you have to practice them even you you get a small idea that's fine but you you model it you animate it so then you can uh, get a uh, further betterment in your mind automatically so i have given some youtube channels which are uh, currently uh, doing a lot of um, tutorials uh, putting a lot of tutorials on solid modeling you get some software uh, particularly solid works installed in your uh, laptop and then you you start to practice these things and you get some expertise in that so that you can uh, implement and uh, you can uh, see your ideas as a model and then next one is think out of box which means uh, if you are a mechanical engineer it's not that you can only do some uh, complete mechanical uh, product I mean nowadays the products if you see all the products are interdisciplinary you, you see for the same product that you are developing you may want to add some intelligence into that or you may want to automate that so then you need a uh, you need a, a support of an electronic engineer or or a computer guy so you have to think out of box so you have to think outside your learning scope and then you have to learn all other things as well so this is uh, something a lecture that i have recently come across about uh, thinking out of box i also encourage you to uh, look into that video at your leisure time and think without a pressure obviously whenever you think in a pressurized situation you won't get a good idea you better idea so you you don't uh, go uh, for a competition for that competition you don't uh, try to find an idea that's not a good way so whenever you you think you, you think without a pressure you create an idea and you you start to design and then when your idea reached a specific shape and then you go for a, a competition okay so that will be the good one good one and then uh, make a small team of like minded because uh, in my opinion a single one single person cannot create the best product so you have to have a team you have to have a team of at least 3 members of like minded people who really has the same kind of interest that you have in your mind to develop the product and also they should have some expertise in the other fields okay so that will be good so you can discuss some ideas now and then and then you can develop some good idea that you come across and that's the way you can cultivate your uh, habitual idea generation process and then uh context driven idea sometime the environment itself will drive you to get some idea or uh, to come out with some idea as like nowadays we face uh, covid-19 pandemic and the world is facing that so in this kind of critical emergency situations you you may require to do, uh, come out uh, with solution for some problems like uh, logistic management or like uh, finding the nose mask or like uh, uh getting some uh, low cost ventilators or uh, sanitizers and lot of uh, uh, things right so in such kind of situations you have to uh, the, the environment itself will push you to come out with an uh, idea so if you are good in this habitual generation of idea then easily you will come out with a, a good idea at at such kind of critical situations now let us see uh, some of the good ideas that are conceived through some examples so what you are seeing in the image is a leap chair is a flexible chair you can see or like office chair specifically uh, designed for an office uh, uh, person who is working for a long time under the desk uh, so here the problem uh, that they are facing is uh, the back pain so uh, the person who spend a lot of time on the desk usually get this so before you get this idea uh, the company that uh, who designed this particular chair they reported that they have done small research work and they have come to know that the spine of every human is unique it's like a fingerprint so every one of us has a unique spine print so the position of this print spine print changes when you change your position of sitting when you sit straight up or when you sit down or when you recline for the relax 
so in all the position of your sitting gesture this position of your spine print changes so if you want to avoid the back pain then what supposed to be done is your chair on which you are sitting should give you the support at all the position of your gesture it required to give the support at all the positions so that is one of the main point that they have identified so it has to give the support at all the position and the next one is two positions the one is work zone which means whenever you sit and start to do the work in your office then you will be keeping one position that you will be sitting straight up and then you will be doing your work and when you want to relax you will recline back so you have a gap so your comfort zone and your work zone so you have two zones okay so well, when you have your back get reclined the upper part of your back will go back and the lower back of your spine will come front so the upper and lower part of your entire spine should be supported independently through a mechanism so that is another specific uh, issue they have uh, found they have found out, uh, out of their study so they started to design uh, they have uh, got an idea for uh, overcoming this issue so you have to see the issue where you are uh, working or where you are uh, like uh, wherever you go 